Jesus wants to have an intimate relationship with each one of us. Sort of, but I think it's true. I love that song. It's one of my favorite songs. I missed that writing day for some reason. <laughs> Terry's going to do one of my favorite songs that, that he wrote in Ohio. It's a great story, too. Tell the story. Tell the story. <laughs> well, um, quite a few years ago, we were playing in Akron, Ohio. And uh, Akron, at the time, we, we were playing open and show for Over the Run. <laughs> And uh, I love that band. And uh, so we had, a, between our sound check and the time we were going to go on, we had uh, quite a bit of time to kill. And we went walking around downtown Akron. And downtown Akron, I don't know how, how it is now, but at the time it was uh, really kind of depressed and, and everything was boarded up and um, it was kind of a city in decay. And we were walking down. Uh, the street and sticking out of MD and sticking out of this one building was this awning, like this Egyptian looking awning. And uh, over the top of it, it said Cairo. And um, we went in and it was this old time, kind of old school bar. And it had a tuck and roll upholstery and it had uh, on the wall, the guy I guess had done these trips to the Middle East and it had all these weird looking big giant bugs and frames, you know, that were framed all over the place. <laughs> And just a cast of characters sitting in the, in the bar. It was kind of like a David Lynch movie. It was very surreal. And uh, there was this, uh, a lady with silver hair that, that kind of had the big beehive hair that was tending bar. And uh, at the end, one end of the bar, next to the jukebox, there was um, a, a little midget that was in a clown suit. And he would go play these old... 78s in the jukebox, and it was only these old 78s and it was two songs for a dime. And um, so he would play these, you know, he would just kind of go back to the bar and he'd sit there and laugh, you know, and drink. And, it, and um, I, you know, growing up, I was kind of scared of midgets and clowns. <laughs> no, no offense, no offense to either, really. But um, I think when I was little, I thought I was going to be one or something. So I, I but uh, at the other end of the bar, there was there was a guy that was sitting there, and he obviously had some alcoholic issues, and he was kind of drinking and shaking and smoking. And, um, in back in the corner, there was a, a woman who was uh, pretty obviously a prostitute, and she was hitting on this guy, and they were kind of arranging a deal. And so it was a very surreal scene. And um, at the time, I was reading a book by an author named Graham Greene, which I'm sure a lot of you have heard of. He, fantastic writer, and he uh, wrote one of my all-time favorite books called The Power of Glory. And it's a story of the character is called the Whiskey Priest, you don't really know his name, and he is in Central America somewhere, war-torn, war-torn country, and he's trying to escape not only the country, but he's turned his back on God, he's turned back on his back on his faith, denounced it all, doesn't want to be a priest, doesn't want to be a Christian, hates God, drunk constantly. And he, as he journeys from one end of the country to the other to try and get over the border, he's in, thrown into these encounters where he has to minister to people. He has to become the, the person that he was called by God to be. And uh, over and over and over again until by the end of the book he finds his faith uh, and through this kind of strange journey. And for me, this is one of the few times in my life where I walked into a place and looked around and I really kind of had an epiphany of this is the place that Jesus would be, among broken, really, really broken, destitute people. And um, in my old age, I get emotional when I talk about this, but in my, old, in my middle age, I'm not going to my old age, my kids, that's my kids in uh, In my middle age, I, I've come to really want to extend mercy to everyone around me because I want them to extend me the same mercy. Amen. And... Um, I think that God, at this point in our lives, I think that God is very attracted to our brokenness and our frailty and uh, because that's when he can come and heal us. And that's when he can come and be with us. And so I, I, we got done uh, there. We went back to the show. And after the show in the van, I started scribbling down the lyrics to this. And um, it's called Mercy Lives Here. <laughs> Yes. 
See you. 